y'all my name is katie and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be talking about the top five series that i want to reread i feel like lately i've been doing a lot of top five videos whenever i lack inspiration they're basically just a good way for me to jump start talking about a topic and so today i was just thinking about how i really have a lot of series that i would like to reread i think kind of the purpose of buying books is so that we read them more than once you have them there to read whenever you want and i don't have to reread these guys like anytime soon or anything like that but in the future these are books that i do want to experience again and i think would be wonderful to experience again and i would pick up on more details when i reread them and i think you know there's definitely this mindset of just wanting the newest books which is totally what i do i love new books but there is something special about re-experiencing an old favorite and so now i'm going to be talking about the top five that i want to reread starting off this list we have a game of thrones by george rr R. martin which is quite a feat considering that this includes game of thrones a clash of kings a storm of swords a feast for crows and a dance with the dragons all that i have read before however we now also have a knight of the seven kingdoms which is a prequel novel and fire and blood which is a 700 page um history of the targaryens so you know george R. R. martin's put a lot of thought into world building because this whole book is basically prequel world building but i do want to read it because i love game of thrones and we also have the world of ice and fire which is this big chunker that uh you know is literally an encyclopedia into his world there is quite a lot to discover here and i think that there will be a point in the future that i really just want to dive straight back in to game of thrones and i mean now that the tv series has ended i'm kind of really looking forward to the final two books being the winds of winter and what is it signs of spring something with spring is the last book title it's it's just like the books and the tv show just kind of have diverged at a point and i think that the book is just going to be an altogether different experience than the tv show so when the final two books come out i do want to just kind of tackle the whole thing however i have no idea when that will be so i don't have any plans to start rereading game of thrones soon but that is something that i would love to do in the future so game of thrones what is game of thrones about if you don't know um, it is a very involved adult fantasy series about the land of Westeros. We have all of these ruling families and uh, the central conflict centers around the Starks which have the seat of power in the north and the Lannisters which are kind of like second to the Baratheons which have the throne in the south and it is just so involved I don't really know how to explain it. Um, I will link a trailer to season one of the TV show because that will give it a better explanation than I can because it's just so sprawling. I don't know how to sum it up. But in uh, just like, you know, a little, little world building here is that we have um, this land where the seasons are all out of balance. So the summers can last for a long time. And then when winter comes, it brings havoc with it, which is why we had the iconic say saying, winter is coming i mean this is just epic epic in scale just epic the characters epic 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 but yet yeah, easily readable so one day i will reread the series and one day hopefully we will get the last two books because i'm so looking forward to experiencing them again at number four on the list a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which consists of A Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light. If you don't know, V.E. Schwab is my Slytherin queen. This is the series that really got me into reading V.E. Schwab. The first of her books that I read, and I was just so enamored with the world characters. Like, I love Kel and Lila so, so much. There are four parallel Londons, Grey London, our regular schmegular old London, Red London where magic is abundant, White London where magic is slowly seeping from the land and killing the land, and Black London where magic is gone completely and kind of just left nothingness in its wake. Kel is the only one that can travel in between these worlds because he is an Antari, otherwise known as a blood magician. There are other magicians in this world, but they only have elemental powers. However, since Kel is Antari, he has one black eye and 
has the power to wield all of the elements as well as blood magic. When Kel is illegally smuggling artifacts across the different Londons, he runs into pickpocket Lila Bard, and when she robs him and saves him, she convinces Kel to take her on an adventure. And thus chaos begins. And oh my god, I just remember I fell head over heels for this story and this world and these characters. And I need to experience it again. I mean, from the initial events in A Darker Shade of Magic to the Essen talk in Gathering of Shadows, the place where it all came together in a conjuring of light for such an epic conclusion. Like, I love the series with my whole heart and I love rereading things that I just kn know that I love and re-experiencing them because it's just natural to forget details over time. That's just how human brains work. And I've been slowly but surely collecting the collector's editions of the series. We have A Darker Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadows. The Conjuring of Light edition comes out in October and my set will be complete. There are also Barnes & Noble metallic editions, but I liked the black ones better, so I've just chosen to collect these guys. And they have like cool fan art on them inside and I love it. And then we also have a prequel comic book series that is associated with it. So this follows Rai's father who is King Maxim when he is only a prince and it is beautiful art style and it's a cool way. It's really cool that one of my favorite series has its own comic book and it's written by V.E. Schwab herself and it, it's cool that yeah it's cool that you can just get like a crossover into different formats. I think that's amazing and the second bind up comes out in October. So yes, if you have not read A Darker Shade of Magic, please do. It is one of my absolute favorites. Coming in at number three, we have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is the beautiful UK hardback with the blue sprayed edges. I have a whole video about finding rare books because this is a hot commodity um, on my channel. Please go check that out if you want to hear more about how I acquired this copy. And then I also have Muse of Nightmares in matching sprayed edition and like, ugh, I'm just so happy that I have these for my collection because this is seriously one of my favorite series of all time. It's just so beautiful. And then of course I also have the US editions of Stranger Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares and these are the ones that I read and tabbed the heck out of. And they are also both signed because I went to a Lady Taylor signing and I got to meet her and I brought my big old stack of books and I was like, hello, please sign these, I love you. It was a great time. I love like the little meat on the cover. Ugh, I just, the beauty of this series of Lainey Taylor's writing really is just something to behold. Like I remember I wrote my review and I said that reading these books is like listening to the most moving, emotional, eloquent music and it really just feels like that. There is a feeling associated with reading these books that I cannot put into words but it just is magical like I've never been so transported by the beauty of words when reading this series. Lainey Taylor is seriously a creative genius and this my favorite quote on the back is it was impossible of course but when did that ever stop any dreamer from dreaming and if it just has so much um power and like talks about dreams and it is just as you can see I'm like getting emotional just thinking about this book, which is clearly why I need to re-experience it. Strange Dreamer follows Laszlo Strange. He is a war orphan and junior librarian. Since he was five, he was obsessed with the lost mythic city of Weep. And the true name of Weep was lost to the world. No one actually knows what it is, but everyone just calls it Weep. And Laszlo is obsessed with the city. It used to be one of the most prosperous cities in the world and then 200 years ago it was mysteriously cut off from the rest of humankind. What happened to it to cut it off and what is going on there now? When a caravan comes to Laszlo city looking for the strongest and the best for an impossible mission back in Weep, Laszlo jumps at a chance to join them and that's just like really all I'm gonna say. There's just so much to unfold in the myths and the lore of this world. It is a treat, it is a, it is, it is a journey, and it is just so, so beautiful and heartbreaking, and I just want to experience the feeling of reading these words again because it was completely soul-touching and amazing. In at number two, 
is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, which is this book. A Court of Miss and Fury, like the best book ever. A Court of Wings and Ruin. And the novella A Court of Frost and Starlight. And the reason that I want to reread this series is because I never annotated it when I first read it. I read it before I started getting into annotating and I think I would just love to mark up my book with all of my like thoughts and feels. And we have a fourth novel coming in this series. I'm so trash for the Akatar series. Like I devoured the books. I think I read each book in like two days. I read the whole series in under a week. Like I am so obsessed with it. This is what started me on becoming Sarah J Mass trash. It is just a powerful story of emotional transformation of our main character, Feyre, and I love it with my whole heart. And if you, you don't know, A Court of Thorns and Roses is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, while A Court of Mist and Fury is a Hades and Persephone retelling. So take of that what you will. 19-year-old Huntress Feyre is in the forest hunting for some dinner for her starving family when she accidentally kills a wolf disguised as a fae. She is then dragged into the fairy realms, which are just north of where she lives in the human realms, as part of a bargain for killing the fae. But as an ancient wicked shadow grows over the fairy lands, Feyre must find a way to stop it or doom the entire world of the Fae. And like this book definitely has a different tone than the second two, but it's kind of like necessary for where we go. And like this, A Court of Mist and Fury is like one of my favorite books ever. It is just such a powerful story about like love and loss and growth. And I love it a lot and I, always always flip through to my favorite parts to reread them and i just feel like if a book has that kind of staying power with you like i want to dive into the series and really truly re-experience it and i will probably do that in preparation for when the fourth book comes out which is slated for april according to the bloomsbury website some sleuths found it i don't know if it's true though but i'm hopeful and coming in at the number one spot is none other Oh God, oh God. Sorry, Dumbledore. Then, of course, Harry Potter. I have not done a Harry Potter reread in far, far too long. I think the last time that I read them was probably late middle school, early high school, and that is like almost, oh my God, 10 years ago at this point. <gasps> Oh, oh god, I'm I'm old. Okay, anyways, so I have not reread the series in so long, and I'm just dying dying to reread them and annotate them because it's just it's what harry deserves it's the story of my childhood i mean i don't think we even need a description of what harry potter is about because it's harry potter you know the boy who lived voldemort all that good stuff like it's just such a powerful and transformative story and there is really a reason that everyone loves harry potter it's what started me on my whole reading journey like it is the the book of my childhood the book of my childhood, defining book of my childhood. I read all of the books multiple times and I'm really sad about the fact that I have not read Harry Potter in such a long, long time. And so I am planning on doing a reread and annotating the heck out of them. Obviously I'm not gonna annotate this illustrated edition, I'm just holding it up because look at how pretty it is. I wanna reread and annotate. I think it's just gonna be such a special experience to reread Harry Potter and be able to write down my thoughts as I read and really connect with the story. Why well, it's number one on my list and hopefully the series that I reread first because I just need Harry Potter in my life. It just reminds you to keep this magic and this joy and like I, I just love Harry Potter with my whole heart. Okay, and that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know what series you would like to reread the most down below and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.